Hi, I want to do a quick share with you before I pop this into the mail. I made another supply style or flourish style journal for a friend. And if you guys have watched any of my videos, you see this cover was one I made in one of my crackle painting videos uh, many videos ago. It was originally a bright white, I think it was a Time Life book. They come in sets. I got a whole bunch of, of those books. And uh, anyway, it was bright white. So if you go back and you watch that video, you can see how to turn any one of your books into sort of a vintage fun looking book. So the idea of a flowish journal or a flow style journal is it's a supply style journal. So everything that you send or that you're making for it is meant to be taken out and used in other projects. So with that in mind, the recipient of this really is in love with metallics. And so I wanted, she was the inspiration for making metallic covers. Now I'm hoping she's going to use it as a journal cover in the future, but you never know, but it's available as one. So I went a hard band, hard book, hardcover book, took the insides out. I did the faux painting, poked a hole, sewed the button, and it, the, the signatures are just tied in with twine binding so she can sew, if she'd like to use it as a journal in the future, she could sew signatures in or she could even put grommets in and use it as a Midori style notebook. Um, I did go and use um, my upholstery samples. I A few videos ago I told you guys how um, I was gifted a large selection of upholstery samples. So I've really enjoyed using them in these books. With any sort of fabric pocket that you're going to make for a book like this, it's going to hold a lot of stuff. A couple things you want to keep in mind. One thing you want to make the pocket out of something that's going to have some sort of give to it. Because if you do it really um, straightforward or you don't leave a gather or you don't use something that has any give, you won't be able to stick a lot of stuff in the pocket. And the other thing is, is I glued this after I, I took the two pieces of fabric, I measured the book, decided how I wanted it to be, took the two pieces of fabric, and I used pinking shears. So you can see that's why it has the zigzaggy, you know, or toothy looking sides and top to it. That's so that it won't fray. And then I just side th sewed three sides, the two, the bottom and the two sides, and I did it with a zigzag stitch. I went back and I used uh, tacky glue and I put tacky glue both on the book cover and on the fabric pocket on the back of it. And um, then I burnished it down really well. You can use a bone folder. I like the back of a pair of scissors or you can even use your fingers. Then you wanna give it a good setup. You wanna let it sit for a good long while to make sure it's dry before you stick anything in. So if you're gonna make one of these fabric pockets for your book, I would say let your book dry, let it dry inside your book a good two or three days before you, um, you use it. You might also wanna think about putting in between the pocket and the back fabric some wax paper so that way if the glue seeps through the fabric it doesn't stick your page, your pocket together. Those are just my tips. So as you can see in her journal it the it's got a whole lot of cool stuff in it. So this is from one of the other earlier videos I did um, where I showed you how to make a junk mail. You get those junk mail postcards in the mail. Well I showed you how to make a, a pocket or an envelope with it so that's one of these. This is a uh, food packaging. I think these were probably cereal box or pasta box or you know lightweight chipboard food packaging that I've gone back and painted with uh, chalkboard paint. And then she can put paper on them or cover and you can actually use chalk to draw on them or collage, whatever you'd like. Inside is filled with just a bunch of goodies. I'm not going to show you all of it. I want it to be a, a surprise for her too. I do live in the tropics so I sent her some images of where I live and this is the island I live on. I live on the island of Maui and this is a calendar page from a, uh, from a calendar here in Maui. I used some hanging files and I folded up a portion of it, obviously cut off the metal bit that hangs up and you know made a pocket with it. You can also go back and use these. These make great journaling covers as well. Did a bunch of different die cuts. This is from some metallic wallpaper. Here's some more packaging tags that I made. These are not painted on, so she can go back and paint or collage on them, but it's just fun. Uh, this is a library style pocket. I have a tutorial on my channel uh, showing you how to make them out of book, book pages. Really so easy. 
great way to use up your book pages, jelly printed on these, just fun, fun way to add to your journaling efforts. So for me, I really enjoy sharing my stash this way. Um, I have a whole lot of different materials that I enjoy using. This is textured wallpaper, which is would make also a great journaling cover. Stamped tissue paper, book jacket. These make great journaling covers too. My tip is if you're going to use one of these as a journaling cover, you do want to go ahead and and you and you're going to paint on it. You want to go ahead and sand it with some lightweight sandpaper before you add your paint to it. That way it'll stick. It'll give it some tooth. But I, I liked the images on this one. You know, I I think these, for me, these journals can sort of take on a life of their own. Once I decide on a cover or um, I start collecting bits and pieces and it just sort of, each one is a little, I mean, obviously I have the same similar supplies but they each take on a life of their own and I really enjoy that part of this uh, process. These are from an old encyclopedia and I love using them in my collage work. This particular encyclopedia, I can't even tell you if it's, uh, I, I don't even remember the brand of, of which one it is. The pages are thin enough that if you glue on them they become translucent so they look great in your mixed media work. I sent her some children's book pages and um, there's lots of stuff in here you can see. Calendar pages, children's book pages. Um, I sent her some of my paper clip embellishments that I enjoy making for magazine pages. You know, find your image, glue it onto some thin weight chipboard like pasta boxes or cereal boxes and then cut another piece exactly, you know, similar size, put a slit in it and put your paper clip and then you wedge them together. Fun way to just make your own unique embellishments. So as I was saying, these journals sort of take on a life of their own and I really find that in itself is, is fun to experience as well. You know, I just went through and I, and I sent her stuff that if I was going to make myself a junk journal, what would I like in it? So it has just all sorts of bits and fun pieces and, you know, ledger paper, calendar pages, algebra book, geometry book, magazine pages, old book pages, beautiful, um, it's like a Japanese workbook. Just beautiful images that I enjoyed or texture color patterning that I like. This came from a gardening magazine, another one of those paperclip embellishments. You know, just fun, fun bits and pieces that she can reuse in her efforts and her junk journaling, collaging efforts, mixed media efforts. What is neat about this particular form of collecting bits and pieces is if she wanted to, she could actually just take all of it and redesign the signatures and sew them in and she would have her own junk journal, sort of a junk journal supply kit all in one. Some of these are really fun um, from where I live, flyers and stuff, but the, the weight of them is really nice if you wanted to take them apart and use them as other things. Love to jelly print on magazine pages, center a few of those. Japanese writing paper, um, I mean Japanese book pages, more wallpaper samples, my little tea tags that I make. Just fun, just fun bits and pieces, things that I like, things that I enjoy. Um, I loved this. This was a book on, on English cuisine, and if you look at the map, it was it shows you just where all kinds of fun things and different types of dishes, English style dishes originate in, in the map. I love this. This is jelly printed on wax paper and I've used this in my collages. I also make um, embellishments from it and I've also sewn them together to make bags. So it's a fun, wax paper is one of my favorite things to use as well. Loved this magazine page. Just loved it. You know, I collect a lot of different stuff and I file it in different ways and then when I began to put together a journal like this, it just sort of let the things speak to me as what I'm going to put in it. 
I love this. This is uh, jelly printed on some magazine pages, but I love the texture that it that it has, and uh, I loved the peaks of the red through it. It feels really nice if you're a tactile person like me and really like the texture of things. Some more book jackets to use as potential pockets or covers in, in her journaling efforts. Another magazine page. I love those. Just fun. So if you decide you want to make one of these journals for yourself, you know, focus on a theme and go for it. If it's just whimsical and fun and it's a great way to collect your stuff and even if you don't go as far as making the outside cover the way I did, you know, completing it, it's just a fun way to create a little stash for yourself or future projects. These are just some die cuts made out of wallpaper. Um, this, these I love. These you can get at the grocery store. These are just little glossine, little wax paper sandwich bags and I really like them. Inside I've included some you know, paper flowers that I enjoy making. They will look like this once she scrunches the pages up. And um, oh, these are kind of fun. I made, I had, went on a tangent. One of my friends sent me some paper feathers and me loving to jelly print on magazines, I made my version. Um, these are all jelly printed on magazine pages and then I've glued them together, glued the pages together and, and I put this recycled, somebody gave me a whole bag of it, I think it's telephone wire and uh, used it, but you can use anything. But I just thought that's a fun way also to use your, reuse your magazine pages if you like using those in your work like I do. And you can see some more fun flyers from where I live and some paper clip embellishments. These are kind of fun. These are what I use as paper clip blanks. So what I do is I punch a circle out of thin weight product chipboard, you know, like pasta box or cereal box. And then I go back and I put a little niche in one of them, pull the paper clip through and glue it together. And this will be like the base for a paper clip embellishment. So you could go back and say, add your flower to the top of it. So it's like the base of many things. So I sent her a few just to give her the idea that maybe that's something she might want to think about creating in her own, you know, in her own stash. More packaging tags. You can sort of see the before and after. You know, this would have been the before, this would have been after. You know, the only only tip I can give you when you do these is that you need to, you definitely need to um, sand just with a lightweight sandpaper and rough up the the product box before you paint anything on it and that way the paint holds. And she has more envelopes and more packaging uh, tags and more book page library pockets and just a bunch of fun little bits and pieces and another um, back journal cover pocket made from those upholstery uh, samples. I did um, punch a hole in the between all of the fabric and put a hair tie, and that's the closure. You know, that's what wraps around for the button. Now, you know, with the idea that you're gonna take everything apart and you're gonna use everything, you know, I think because she's in love with metallics, this will be a nice journal cover for her eventually. I did, on hers, come back and do a journaling charm, and I, it's on a paper clip. I did make it out of puzzle pieces, you know, and I glued them to really cool fibers that I really liked, and it's just put on the journal with one of these, um, you know, little, I don't know the exact name of this type of paper clip, but you get the idea. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and as always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha. Take care.